also make sure to do that with you. Hello and welcome into this week's edition of AFMC TV. We're glad you're joining us today. Rebecca Denniston is with us, dermatologist, and we are going to talk about winter skincare. I mean, yes. it's cold outside. It is, it is. Yeah. So how should our skincare routine be changing up? I mean, obviously we really shouldn't be doing probably what we were doing in, uh, I don't know, August, September. Right, right, <laughs> exactly, yes. So. Uh, for sure in the winter, your skincare needs to change. And a lot of it just has to do with, you know, it's not as humid outside, yeah. the air's drier, it's cooler, and your skin has, it will see those effects. Yeah. So you're gonna get drier, your skin may get more irritated or sensitive. So you, you definitely wanna make some changes. Um, a lot of people just think, well, I need to make changes on my face, but you really yeah. need to do your whole body. Okay. Um, so some basic things. Please. Um, Easy things like using a more moisturizing soap to bathe with. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you get out of the bath or the shower, kind of pat dry. And then you wanna do a thicker moisturizer. That's probably the biggest change you wanna make. So in the summer, we tend to stick with a lighter moisturizer, mm -hmm. um, something not as heavy, so more lotions. But in the winter, you wanna switch more to a cream. So something that's thicker, gonna hold in more water and give you more moisture. Because the whole point is to help you stay, help your skin right. stay hydrated. Yes, right. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yes. What are some common misconceptions that people have during the winter months yeah, with their yeah. skin? Yeah, so I think there's a couple. One being that you don't have to change your skincare routine, but you really do. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing. And then the second biggest thing would be sunscreen. So okay. yes, so we think, okay, we're not in the sun as much anymore. We may not be at the pool or the lake, but you really still do get sun in the winter. So just walking to and from your car, driving in your car, if you're playing outside, even though it may be cloudy, you're mm -hmm. still getting sun. Okay. So really still being diligent about wearing your sunscreen is a big thing. That's, that's really good because you're right. We aren't at the beach generally. We're not at the pool. We are dreaming of those days. Yes. And so, no, I wouldn't think on a cloudy gray day that I need to have right. sunscreen exactly. on my face. Yes. So yes. Um, what about those overnight, um, I don't know, you see them, gloves and socks yes. uh, that have moisturizer or some kind of lotion right. in them to keep your hands yes. and feet hydrated. Yeah, I think that's great because a lot of times the first place that you see that lack of moisture is your hands and your feet. They tend to dry out really quickly and especially now we're washing our hands all the time. Yes. And so, what I usually suggest to my patients is doing a good thick moisturizer, and then you can also add in an emollient like Vaseline or Aquaphor, okay. and then put a pair of gloves or socks on. Okay. If you can sleep in them, that's great. That's a quick way to add moisture back to your skin. So definitely something that can help for sure. What about um, humidifiers? Are they a good this time of year? Do they help or do they? is it a double-edged sword because it's taking moisture I don't know. Yes, <laughs> definitely. So they, they for sure help. They're going to add that moisture and humidity back to the air that we would have lost. Um, and so I definitely think there's benefit, especially if you're struggling with dry skin. Um, 100 percent. I think that's helpful. And then when do you I'm curious, when do you know if it's if it's dry skin, you know, you're you're itching, you're scratching. When do you know that it's dry skin versus like some type of skin? Um, like eczema or psoriasis or something like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great question. So a lot of times just normal dry skin will respond to good thick moisturizers. So if okay. you're doing creams, you're doing Vaseline, Aquaphor, that should really improve your skin pretty quickly. If you're not improving and you're really struggling with dryness, redness, sensitivity, itching, then there might be more of an underlying eczema going on. Mm -hmm. um, we see that very commonly on the hands, um, but you can get on other places of the body too. What's the big thing that you guys see this time of year in your office? Yeah, well, I definitely think probably the number one thing is eczema because you're losing that water in your skin. You're gonna break out quicker because the the air is more dry. So that's probably the number one thing. We see a lot of rashes, um, just more sensitivity and irritation in the winter, and then psoriasis flares. Psoriasis is more of an inflammatory um, rash of the skin. And so a lot of times in the winter, mm -hmm. that gets worse as well. 
Going back to the eczema, um, is that something that once you have, you always have, or can it, does it work itself out and yeah. go away? So interesting question. Um, some people are born with eczema and they may keep it throughout their whole life. And then some people don't develop it until later on in life. Wow. So there's really no rhyme or reason to it. You know, you may have it as a child and then it get better or you may get it as an adult. Um, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm wondering too, um, hydration, just with good old fashioned water, yes. is that gonna help? Definitely as well. Yes. I mean, staying, just like it would in the summer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Staying hydrated definitely helps. Lots and lots of water. Um, I think if you do that in combination with good moisturizing soaps and creams and Vaseline's and all of that, you really should do good. But if you're not and you're struggling, like I said, definitely you want to see your uh, provider. Okay. Sure. All right, Becca, thank you. Remind everybody where yes. we can find you. Yes, so I'm at the Dermatology Group of Arkansas. We have about six locations now. Um, so come on in and, and we'll get you checked out if you're having issues. So Sounds great. Yeah, All thanks right. for having me. Thanks for coming in. Joining us now is Jason Henry, Senior Director of Ancillary Services at Arkansas Heart Hospital, who is also over the sleep clinic there at the hospital. Hi, Jason, thanks for joining us. Hello, Michelle. Nice to, nice to be with you this morning. It's good to see you. Thanks. So sleep. Oh my goodness. We all, it's, it's what we crave. And some of us get great night sleeps and some of us get horrible night sleeps. And now it's dark all the time. How is this impacting our circadian rhythm? Sure. So yeah, so that circadian uh, rhythm you referenced, it's like our internal clock. And it's uh, it's influenced a lot by uh, or by a lot of environmental cues, most notably uh, light. And so when the nights are and there's more darkness and more light than we're used to, it throw it can throw us off for sure. Um, and you know, it, you know, our after after work, after school events, you know, PTA meetings, basketball games, all the, they're still happening at the same time. So uh, you've got to you've got to really get a good balance and 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 uh, get accustomed to it. So it's we kind of train ourselves to get in and re re reboot ourselves when the time changes and, and we've got more darkness. There are definitely moments when I think, my gosh, it must be 8.30. No, no, it's 4.45. <laughs> That's a little extreme, but you know. <laughs> so um, how are there ways to combat this um, or to, to get ourselves kind of back right um, and, and being able to fall asleep at more of a regular time that we're used to, not not 445, because it is so much darker so much earlier now. For sure. So, I mean, our goal, you're looking for seven to eight hours of sleep at night, and uh, that's hard to do for a lot of people, and especially when we've got active lives. Um, so the, I'm going to repeat this several times today, but consistency is the key. So we've got to have a consistent schedule and if you're jumping around and you're going to bed at eleven o'clock one night and seven o'clock one night, you're that's you're gonna you're gonna have trouble getting in a good rhythm because um, we still got to get up in the morning and go to work and and take care of the kids and do everything we got to do. So um, consistency is the key, um, you know. And part of that too is having a good a good uh, schedule it includes you know number one going you know at the right time the same time every night but also setting yourself up for success for a good successful sleep so um you know cutting down on uh the electronic devices before before you go to bed um and and that comes down to light too so uh, you know the circadian rhythm as you were discussing is triggered you know by light so if we're sitting there staring at a, a phone when we should be going to sleep um, that's light coming into our uh, our mind and our, our brain and stimulating us. And so you, we've got to cut that stuff out. Um, also, just uh, setting your room up to make sure it's comfortable, make sure it's cool and, and, um, and uh, you know, your bed's comfortable. <laughs> Obviously, you want a nice, comfortable bed, too. If you're sleeping on a rock, it's going to be hard. Um, <laughs> dimming the lights. I mean, even before you, you you go to bed, you know, turn the lights down in the evening, you know, get yourself, get your mind going in that, in that direction to where, you know, hey, we're, we need to, to, to slow everything down and calm down. Um, 
that's a, that's a real real key. Limiting alcohol too. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to have me a drink or two, and and it'll make me go to sleep. And it might help you get get to sleep, but it may, you know, it may not make you for a good restful sleep. Right. Um. Exercise during the day, huge. So during the day, you know, we got we got two parts of the uh, the circadian rhythm, as you were asking, you, you were talking about. You got the nighttime and the daytime. So we want to enhance our daytime experience. Uh, by getting outside, getting light, getting exercise, um, and, and enhancing that part of the rhythm so that the other part is enhanced. So you go, you get two parts there. Let me ask, going back to screens, and I, I know you mentioned about the cell phone, and it, we've heard and read, you know, two hours before bed, put the phone away, or maybe an hour before bed, put the phone away. What about television screens and what about having a television in your room if you're used to going into your room and getting into bed and then watching tv for 30 minutes does that play with with that rhythm as well exactly the same so i mean that's light coming in and and it's that's the kicker there and it's also stimulation too so um everybody i have a tv in my room everybody does but if yeah. that's a problem for you get it get it out you know uh, get it out of there and, and eliminate that uh that that stimulation okay that's good advice and is it really true two hours before bedtime get off your phone well i mean it's it's going to be different from everybody but i mean at least at least 30 minutes i mean you've got to you've got to turn that stuff off maybe you know read something and with a you know a nice dim lamp next to you or something just to calm everything down um meditation is a good uh, excellent uh tool to to use to to get yourself ready for sleep just to to calm the mind down you know let go of the day uh, you know, forget about all the stresses and the work. I mean, the work's going to be there in the morning. Just, just calm, calm everything down, slow everything down, you know, cause your body's, when you sleep, you're slowing everything down, the digestive system, the mind, everything shuts down. And so sometimes we have to help that and, you know, get it started. Can we make up sleep? So, I mean, the go-to uh, for any of everybody is to take you a nap, right? <laughs> so I'm tired. I didn't get enough sleep last night. I'm going to take a nap. And the, and the naps are good. They can be beneficial, but you've got to keep it to you know to a minimum, to a limit. You know, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And if you take you a two or three hour nap in the afternoon, if I did, I there's no way I'd be able to go to sleep at night. So set it, set an alarm if you take you a nap. <laughs> that's that's very good. Um, what about apps and wearables, um, different things that can um, gauge our sleep and determine if we are getting into deep sleep and how important is it that we get into deep sleep? Sure. So there's lots of, there's stuff that, yeah, like you said, that monitor your sleep. There's, there's apps that help you get to sleep. Um, I think the, the apps that help you get to sleep are can be definitely beneficial for people. Um, and just think of it as meditation. I mean, you're 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 focusing on that music. You're th you're focusing on that soft voice that's relaxing you and calming your mind down. So you're not your mind's not wandering off on that project that's due tomorrow. Or you know you're 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 slowing everything down, focusing on one thing. Uh, so apps like that, you know, they can be very beneficial in in getting you helping you get to sleep for some people. Now um, the apps that um, you know, that monitor your sleep and tell you how well you slept. I, I mean, I would be careful with that because you can get focused on that and that be can become a stressor for you to keep you from going to sleep. So if you're you're, you're going to bed thinking, oh, I got to get 30 percent uh, deep sleep tonight and you're and that's all you're thinking. About, I mean, that's going to be a stressor that that would probably hinder your sleep. <laughs> yep. That's a good, good point. What about some um, something warm to drink before you go to bed? Does that help or does it just depend on the person? Yeah, well, I think so. Yeah, but uh, I mean, you would obviously avoid caffeine or any kind of stimulant. So, you know, sure. a nice herbal uh, nighttime tea, well, you know, chamomile or something like that would be, would be probably be good. Um, but you want to be careful how much water you drink, too. Some people, if you have trouble getting up and going to the bathroom frequently at night, you want to be careful how much water you drink, before, you know, before bedtime. That's right, because that's another, I mean, that's going to wake you up, and then you may have trouble falling back to sleep. Okay. <laughs> all right. Jason, is there anything else that we, we need to know um, as we're all kind of wrestling to get those seven, eight, nine hours of sleep? Well, um, 
the key is consistency, like I said, and and slowing down. You know, at night the work you're you're at work during the day, do your work then, or you're exercising, you're taking care of kids, whatever you're doing, that's where you're doing. Be present at, at night. I mean, it's time to go to sleep. Shut everything down and uh, calm calm down and just focus. You know, relax and chill out. <laughs> and <go to> sleep. <laughs> I love that advice. Just relax and chill out. <laughs> uh, Jason, thank you so much for joining us today. A lot of very important information that we can put into practice starting tonight. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us. We will see you back here next week for more AFMC TV.